So today we are going to be unboxing all of these Milwaukee tools. Uh, this is a incredible amount of tools we are so fortunate to have for our race season in 2023. We. <laughs> <laughs> I want this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm just blown away at how much is here and the capability of these tools you'll see are just incredible. Most of which are battery operated. We don't need any cords anymore. We don't need the dang air compressor making all the noise anymore. And this is just gonna speed up our work and uh, help us produce faster race cars. Key, that is key. All you need to perform better in the shop and at the track. Yeah, so if you're already racing and maybe some of these tools are something that you may have never heard of that could help you, or maybe if you're new to racing and uh, don't know what kind of tools you need to work on a race car, uh, I think a lot of the stuff here is can be very handy. So maybe this will give you some good ideas. And if you like red, this is it. Red and black is my style, I like that. So where do we start? So oh, snap. the first thing I like to show is this is an M12 soldering iron. Uh, I've always soldered with a, a wire, so which is can kind of impede your action of trying to do such a delicate process. By having this battery operated, it's super lightweight. It's probably going to be like holding a pen in your hand when you're nice. doing it, which for a lot of our small connectors, wiring dashes and um, your helmet blower, your MSD box on your race car, uh, soldering your terminals can make them a lot stronger, more durable, so that they don't come apart and lose connection and make you fall out of a race. Don't Here's do this at home. <laughs> So what I really like about this tool is that uh, combined with the 3.0 battery, it stands up on itself, on its own so easily. Some of the smaller M12 batteries don't have a big base, but with that base, when, you, when you're using it and then set it down, it's stable. You're not gonna have it tip over and burn something because it could be hot. Uh, it's got a locking head, Ooh. so you can change the angle and then uh, the on off switch and a battery life indicator. All right, Brian, here you go. <laughs> here I go. So next, this is our three inch cutoff tool. Uh, this is an M12 product too, which makes it super light, uh, easy one-handed operation. Um, pretty excited to use this tool because not only are you able to adjust the depth of the blade in which you're cutting, uh, it's got a guide so you can make sure you, you can lay out a straight edge and make a straight cut. And you can also adjust the angle that your hand is over the piece of material. So you can lay it down or stand it up. It's got a forward and reverse, so you can go in both directions. Because yeah. you need the, the blade spinning against the material. The M12 right angle drill. This is very compact uh, because again, it's in the M12 line, very lightweight. It fits into tight spaces. Like our, our side rails to get that, to get in and be able to drill between the, the chute and the door with the body still on the car. If you got to change one at the track, you're trying to do it in a, in a hurry, this thing will fit in there where a regular drill won't fit and you'd have to start unzoosing the bodies, panels and taking them off and stuff. This pesky <laughs> plastic packaging. This right here is going to take your M18 battery. Yes. And charge anything with a USB port. Mm -hmm. So uh, your cell phone, Mandy's GoPro cameras, mm -hmm. uh, basically 
Anything? Anything we got. We've, I mean, we might have a flashlight. A lot of rechargeable flashlights require uh, USB power, and you can carry this around in your pocket. So there goes. There you go. Now you got a charger, portable charger. That wait a minute. I'm on uh, somebody's pit crew. Not only am I charging my phone, but this tool I was using on a pit stop just died. And now I got a battery in my pocket. <laughs> so it's probably going to be in Mandy's pocket all the time. Yep. So I'll never see it. So we've got a body bag that I can fit into. The body bag? Yeah, it's pretty freaking <laughs> big. So this is a heavy duty contractor bag, which we can fit all these lights in uh, for when it gets dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, uh, when we have uh, pit stops and stuff, a lot of times you don't have a generator nearby or any power source. So we've got all these lights to be able to be able to see what we're doing. I feel so like I'm going to go camping with that one. That one is baby awesome. Here. It's huge. When you turn it on, can light up an entire room. Oh my God. So uh, I think for contractors, they would use it. They don't have the electric run yet. So they got to be able to work. So they put this on the floor and it lights up the ceiling or oh, yeah. flip it over and hang it from the ceiling nice and light up the floor so that is just a really cool deal and it's also a power source mm -hmm. so you got the battery plugged in and then now you can power something else from this light and then you can if your battery dies you can plug the light in so this is going to be very handy when the generator dies which you've Preferably any not. Of our videos, that's happened before. <laughs> a few times. We also got the handheld light. This will stand up on top of the battery pack. It's not just going to tip over, right? And then you got to be able to tilt it, so you can set it up where you're working. You know, in a wheel well or something, some area where you need to light something up. This one will uh, clamp to different parts, and it'll also. Uh, stick magnetically say it's magnetic so that's can, nice you can stick it under your your lift or anything of steel and it's got all different modes the next one is this is the dual power tower light the power tower mm -hmm. so this one's got a tripod and it extends to different heights and you can point it so i feel like behind like pit wall this mm. is going to come in handy and uh, just setting it up anywhere around the race car at night to be able to see what we're doing m12 compact spot board this is what we've been needing in the race car trailer so, for so long yeah so this is going to help clean the dust and the dirt from the races out from the trailer and off of the off of the body panels of the car, we'll blow the car off before we load it up in there. Um, just to, just to help keep things clean. Also, uh, again, I hate listening to the loud air compressor. It can just be used as a blow gun to dry things off. And you can hold this up with two fingers. I mean, one. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it's so light, uh, and it only takes an M12 battery because. I mean, I'm not using this for yard work. I'm gonna be, you know, doing some quick cleanup and then it stows away in a small space. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have the M12 grease gun. So again, with the M12 battery, you're looking at lighter weight. A lot of times when you're looking at uh, cordless electric grease guns, uh, guys would use the, the M18. For, for me, what I've used it for is greasing like a tractor implement where there's 30 grease circs. But on a race car, there's probably eight. So. For eight grease zerks, I don't need a big heavy grease gun. 
with a big heavy battery. I want something light to carry around, but yet all I got to do is push the trigger and I got, and I'm greasing that. And what I, and do you need a, do you need to, this? Can you do it manually? Yeah. But when you get down and you're trying to finagle up under uh, the tranny cover to get that front drive shaft universal, it can be, you know, swear words coming out, hands all greasy, uh, and people get pretty frustrated with that one. So my thing is, is you can get the thing on there and then just grab the trigger and you're going and it's gonna it's gonna help you to for those hard to reach spots to grease on the car the next m12 tool is the infrared heat gun this comes in handy for checking your tire temps uh especially you, you can switch the battery packs quickly and you don't need the probe so you don't have to actually have to touch the tire you can just hold it and point it towards it with a laser and get an accurate reading of the temperature of the surface of the tire uh, across the outside middle and inside and see you know how things are going to be wearing uh, your and adjust your air pressures accordingly the other thing that it's handy for is engines um, you can make sure that your headers are all in similar temperatures to make sure that you don't have uh, a dead cylinder or a misfire or something like that um, you can check, are your gauges working properly? Now, if a gauge says that the water temperature is at 180 and, uh, but something's wrong and something's not running right, you tend to question it. But if you can double check with something like this and see, yes, you know, the infrared gun says that it's at 180 as well, we know we're all right. Uh, super handy tool, very, very nice to have around for many different reasons. Next on the M12 is the Milwaukee Hacksaw Recip Saw. So you can use a number of different blades. There's uh, your standard Sawzall blade or there's the torch for thicker material. Uh, sticking this in there and being able to have one-handed operation is the key. So being able to control it with two hands if need be, but if you have to use your other hand to hold the part or uh, to hold a light or for any reason, and you know you get in these situations if there's a crash, there's damage and we just need to get stuff cut away so that it doesn't cut the tire then this is going to come in handy on a pit stop all right so speaking of cutting away at sheet metal or different things that on a race car that are hard to reach here we have the 16 gauge variable speed nibbler So it's lightweight, it takes the M12 battery, and this is going to get into those places you can't get a pair of hand shears in. You know, you're, you're trying to turn around a corner and your shears, you can't turn them and you can't get up underneath there and this thing will just nibble any shape cut that you want to make. This is the 3 8 drive stubby M12 impact wrench with the friction ring. So I choose to use the friction ring on especially our 3 8 drive stuff uh, because for me it's quicker to change the sockets not having to push the pin. The pin drive stuff holds the extension on like stronger but for speed, I think the, the friction ring is the way to go. You can order, when they get weak though, some people don't like them they get weak, you can get new friction rings and uh, there's a special tool to size them and set them on and replace them. So, But this 
puts out 250 foot-pounds of torque, which is way more than enough for a 3 8 drive impact in such a small, lightweight product. So here's our electric 3 8 drive ratchet. You will be so surprised how much torque this puts out, being in the speed that it can zip things on and off and where it can fit because the head is so tiny to be able to fit into spaces to change nuts and bolts and fasteners. And it's surprising for uh, the battery life is very surprising to me. It seems to just, I just use it all the time. So what I'm excited about now is we have the two speed quarter inch right angle impact driver. So I'm gonna unbox this and check this one out. Because of how much I've loved this, I'm kinda excited to see how this one works. So what I know about this is, now I've gone to a bigger battery, we're, in, we're at the M18. Uh, the head, is quick to change. Uh, you can put a drill bit in here. You can put a, a Phillips head or a flathead or uh, there's there's Allen sockets, um, any quarter inch quick deal. But it's right angle again. So again, drawing bumpers or side rails, body mounts. But this is a multi-tool because it's able to also do fasteners because you can put a tip in this for quarter inch drive, three inch drive, half inch drive sockets and be able to put those on it. So this tool can do so many different things. So a big reason I watch these unboxing videos is as you're shopping for tools online, you can't really get a feel for how big is the tool, you know? How does it, how's it gonna fit in your hand and where's, and what type of space is it gonna fit in? But you can read the, the torque range and stuff. So here we have the heavy duty, high torque, half inch drive impact wrench. And then we have the half inch drive mid torque impact wrench. And then we have the compact half inch impact. So between these three, you'll be able to see, you know, which one is right for me. For, for me, this thing will take the lug nuts off of our toter home. So very powerful. Hand it to the wrong person for the race car, you can break bolts <laughs> with it. So uh, there are different settings on it. So if the user knows to turn it down a notch, it's an awesome tool. But if you're working with, uh, if you're working with people and you wanna make sure that they're using the right amount of torque. You have the mid torque, which I think was gonna be awesome for changing wheels on pit stops. And then you have the compact, which I think for, I mean, the wheels come on and off, on and off, on and off, when you're washing the car, when you're working on the car, and then you're gonna, you're gonna torque them anyway. So, Something small, compact, won't over-tighten things. These things still put out 250 foot-pounds. Uh, that's, or wait a minute, let me redo that. Yes, this still, that still puts out 250 foot-pounds. This one is 550 foot-pounds fastening and 650 foot-pounds removing. And then this one, this big old boy has a thousand pounds fastening and 1400 foot pounds on removing fasteners. So this is a great example to see what you're getting in the different size packages. This is the high torque. It's big, it's heavy, and it'll, it'll break loose whatever you need. Then we have the mid torque. It's still got a lot of torque and a lot lighter and fits in smaller places. And then you can go to the compact and it's very compact, even lighter yet. 
And then you have the M12 impact wrench that's even lighter, still has a lot of torque. These all do a lot of different jobs, but it's just for what, what purpose is best for you. My recommendation is go with these two. If you got a big truck, you gotta break some lug nuts loose on that, and then this will be more for getting in some tighter spaces. If you don't ever need 1,400 foot-pounds of torque, then you could go with these two, and you'd have a good range of options. Here we have the seven inch variable speed polish. Whoa. Which comes with a lot of attack. <laughs> Primarily going to use this for is to grind tires. And why did I not get a grinder to grind tires? I got a polisher because of the speed. The grinders turn way too many RPMs and they'll burn the rubber on your tire. So having this variable speed and being able to turn it down to about a thousand RPMs or so is very key to, be, to having the tire prep properly. I really love these, these heads because you can get different sanding pads. I would recommend maybe 24, 36 grit pads. Stick them on here, change them out when they get dull. So you can hear and you can set it the way you need to to sand your tires. It looks like it comes with an extra screen. These can get plugged with rubber. So good to keep that clean. Uh, Keep the, blow these off, blow it off when you're done because you don't want this thing getting plugged with rubber. You want to extend the life of the tool. So this handle, when you put it on there, can make it easier to, to keep this from kicking back at you if you hold it on the tire in the wrong angle. It's a really tricky thing to learn. Most of you tire guys know that getting this at the proper angle and getting the tire spinning at the right, right speed and going the right direction makes all the difference in having it grind nice and smooth and have a nice texture when you're all done. You always need a drill. This is the half inch hammer drill driver. It has the metal chuck, which I like a lot better than the plastic chuck because guys get rough on things. Got the extended reach handle, which goes on. And it's got the speed adjustment. You can set it for regular drilling. You can have it so it clutches. Or you can do it for hammer drilling. So if you gotta do concrete or something. Most of what we do on the race cars is gonna be regular drill setting. But it also has that lock feature, so when you, you can grab a hold of it, tighten it down on the bit, and then click it, and it's locked in there. Next we have the quarter inch impact driver. This is the 2853 impact driver. It's got different settings. Uh, I believe this setting makes it so that when you put screws in the wall, you don't over torque them and strip the wall. So for hanging things up on the wall or there's multiple different attachments I talked to you about with the right angle. Uh, this one's a pistol grip. So it comes with a, a charger in the kit like this. Now again, I'm gonna show you with porta bands the difference in packaging and sizing for the M18 versus the M12. So here we have the M18, much larger quarter band. The M12, much more compact, easier to hold with one hand. And this M12 has a special safety feature to protect you from cutting yourself on the blade. So 
altogether much safer operation one-handed where I feel that this is a much heavier product that you should use two hands with. I'll get it out of the bag for you real quick. See a little better. Um, nice little hook if you're up on a ladder or something. Hang it. Uh, it's quick, quick to change the blades the flip of a lever. I use these uh, to shorten bolts. A lot of times they're the wrong length. Cut them off shorter. Uh, ready rod. Uh, if you have a, if anyone here has a Bicknell chassis, the battery hold down strap always needs to be shortened. This I'm very excited about because again, that loud air compressor. The die grinder, battery operated die grinder is so quiet and versatile. You don't need the, the air hose dragging around the shop and you can get in with multiple different bits. Here we have the four and a half to five inch cutoff. They call it a four and a half inch, five inch grinder. So this has the paddle trigger. It's about 8,500 RPM. Got a quick adjust guard. So that'll spin around to wherever you're working quickly. Or remove it. Four and a half inch, five inch cutoff wheels. Cutting pipe different things on a, on a chassis, uh, make repairs. This tool is very handy. I'm pretty excited about knowing how to use this. But can you see yourself? Yeah. <laughs> so this is gonna get down in your cylinder heads, in your spark plug holes, down in your intake in the inspection hole of the oil pan and I'll be able to inspect parts like the rear end, the transmission that you, you can't get inside and see as well without this tool. I've never had this type of function to be able to do that. I, I mean, it's really just hard to explain how much better you can do your maintenance if you can actually see what's going on without having to take it apart. So this is going to be so handy with, with uh, critical things like engines. Needing to know what, like, is there a problem? Do we run this engine? Um, or is what we're looking at look like, uh, Maybe it seems like a big problem, but it's not. Show us you. Where are you? Beep, beep, beep. There you are. <laughs> yeah, Pretty good picture too, right? Yeah, that's really clear. It's insane. And and it's a, this, there's a longer reach than this mm -hmm. option. But I didn't think I would need it because I feel like this will get anywhere I need to go. These are interesting to me. I've had a lot of sockets over the years, but these are the most versatile anti-roll wrench ready sockets. So they're not round, so that they don't roll away from the project you're on when you Ooh. drop them on the floor. Neat. I'm pretty intrigued to try this and see how it works because I've had that happen to me so many times, it's like a lost socket, where did it go? Scrounging around trying to find it because it got dropped on the floor and maybe the work area wasn't clean enough, yada yada. But, but this is just a neat idea all six point, which is the strongest grip possible for six point fasteners. I feel that too many people use 12 point tools on six point fasteners just because that's all they got. Uh, so I really like having these because the torque range is much higher and without rounding off the edges of the fastener with the socket. So we got SAE and metric in this package. So I forgot to, to mention the wrench ready part. So 
being that the socket is square on the outside, you can use a wrench to turn it instead of a ratchet. And if you're in a tight, confined space. As you can see, we got a lot of Milwaukee tools here. And we're gonna have to charge them. And everybody on the crew needs to know where to go to charge the batteries, where to find a battery that is charged. I think we're having gonna... a charging station like these is going to make it great. Less of a cluster so in our trailer. Alright. This big station is plugged in on the bench. Yes. And we've got packs charging on it. That's where you find it. And that saves right? the amount of wires too. Right. We only got to plug it in one time. Nice. Look at this. They even got a plug on the back of the plug so you're not wasting it. Nice. So, okay, we can, you got, you're saving out once. There's so many things to plug in, right? Not anymore because everything's battery operated. And then this is what the M12 charger looks like. So we can get, we can charge four M12s at the same time and six M18s at the same time. That's gonna get a lot done at once and there'll always be a battery available for all these tools. So we've talked about a lot of tools, we talked about the chargers, now the batteries. There's a lot of different options for batteries. We've got a M12, here's a 4.0. So your amp hour is going to, the higher the number, the longer it's gonna last, right? So you've got smaller amp hour batteries, like this one here is a 2.5. This is very powerful, 2.5 for how small it is. Very light. I've used the 1.5 and gotten a lot of jobs done with it. This thing's been around for a couple of years and they last a long time. But if you need it to last a little longer, you go with the M12 2.5. You go with the 4.0, you got a little more weight in your hand. It's heavier, it takes up more room, but it's gonna last longer. So that's what you go through with picking out which type of batteries you're gonna be using the most. Again, like with your tire grinding, you're gonna need the high output type battery. And there's differences, there's a 6.0, and then I showed you already the 9.0. So the 9.0 is gonna last a little longer, but this will still do a lot. A big bang for your buck. And then for, you know, your intermediate, you got the M18 with the 5.0. There's all different levels of the battery. These are the ones that I chose. So we'd have a wide range for all these different tools of what we would need for power. And I think this is a pretty good assortment of batteries. I've never had this many batteries before. This has been our unboxing video of our Milwaukee M12 and M18 fuel tools for 2023. We're just getting started with the season and these are gonna be a big help to us getting different jobs done on the race cars throughout the season. As we go, I kind of see us showing you using the tools a little bit and then maybe reviewing which ones we like the most and what we like about them what we don't like about them different things so as you're thinking about what kind of cordless tools do we want or whatever tools you need uh what's going to work for you so thanks for watching make sure to like the videos subscribe to the channel uh subscribe to the newsletter uh head over to patreon if you haven't already and come back next time for more dirt track untold <laughs>